librarians from Purcell, and we're excited to celebrate the Pioneer Library System's Summer Learning Challenge with you. We encourage you to have fun this summer reading and learning with friends and family. Learn more about the challenge and sign up today by visiting Pioneer Library System's website. In this video, we'll show you how to make your own wands to imagine your story all summer long. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a fairy wand. The first thing I did was go on a scavenger hunt to see what I could find that would work for a fairy wand. I found this nice long stick. I found some yarn, some ribbon, some beads, and a chenille stem, or some people call them pipe cleaners, and some wildflowers. The first thing I did was take the yarn, tie it around the top of the stick, simple knot. Then I twist it around the stick. And when I got to the bottom of the stick, I tied another knot. I took some of the ribbon, tied it onto the stick, the same kind of a knot, like that. Then I took the chenille stem and the beads, put the beads on it. And one thing that's nice about the chenille stem is if you have small beads with small holes, they will, it'll still go in. And I found a little bell, which I thought would be fun to make my fairy wand jingle. All right, after I got my beads on, took the stick and I start twisting around it with the chenille stem. And then I get my wildflowers. And as I twist the beads around the stick, I twist it also around the wildflowers. And if you notice, my wildflowers had long stems on it and that makes it a lot easier to make it stay and twist them on. All right, so now I have a beautiful fairy wand. Now if you make a wand, take a picture of it and add it to the comments. I would love to see what you come up with. Hi, I'm Karen and today we're making wizard wands and we're going to use materials you have around the house so you don't have to worry about going out getting anything new. We're going to use chopsticks, or if you don't have a chopstick, you can use pencils, or a stick outside on the ground from the trees. You will get your size that you want. This is a really good size for Harry Potter. Then you're going to go around the stick with a 
glue stick, and a glue gun. If you don't have a glue gun at home, you can use glue and string. Just get the string wet with your glue, any kind of glue you have, and you can wrap around your stick to give it some texture and make it kind of look like uh, wood. Once you get closer to the bottom, you'll stop before you get to your hand. So this is a no burn activity. Now this is the part where you can really get creative. You can use anything you have at home. Go back up here to the top. I'm gonna to use beads today. I've put on some glue. I'm gonna pull over this beads plate and I'm gonna pick one out that is interesting to me. If you wanna put some more around the side, all you have to do is just stick them on. Careful if it's still hot. And then to keep those beads on, we're gonna put some more hot glue on top of that. Oops, I've already lost one. Now, while that cools off, I'm gonna do that real quickly, practice with your wand. We're gonna get our paint ready. For this paint that I'm using on this one, I'm just using acrylic paint. You can use any kind of paint you have at home. You can also use fingernail polish. It does a great job too, because once it's on there, you're not gonna be able to tell that that's glue or what your beads look like. The paint does a wonderful job covering it up. So now that my glue is dry, I'm just gonna paint over the top of that. If you're making a lot of these, you can use spray paint. all those beads at the top that we just glued on, you're not gonna be able to see what they look like after we've painted over them. And you do that all the way down the stick till it's all covered. And then you're gonna to go to your next color. You can highlight it with some lighter brown, put some black in there to make it look a little darker in the cracks and crevices of your glue. And then to highlight it all, I had some gold paint. You can use fingernail polish at this point and go over a little bit on the top of it and around the top where your bead was. And there you've got a wand. And once it's dry, you can start using it. Hi, I'm Becky and I'm going to show you guys how to make some giant bubble wands. You're going to need some craft dowel rods, some small eyelets, screw eyes, a washer, and some cotton string, as well as some scissors to cut the string and some pliers to help hold the, the eyelet as you screw it into the end of the dowel. You need two dowels with eyelets screwed into them, like that. After you have both your dowels with your eyelets in the end, take some string. You want about an arm's length 
for the short piece. And you want two arm's lengths for the long piece. Take your short piece, tie one end to one dowel, tie the other end to the other dowel. You could also use full size dowel rods if you want to, uh, but these craft sticks are pretty cheap craft dowels. So, got your short piece connected to both ends. Take your long piece, connect it to one side. And I'm just doing a little knot, square knot. Take your washer, Put it on the long piece and then tie the other end to your th other dowel. Like so. And now you have your giant bubble wand with the washer at the bottom. Now all you need is your bubble solution. You can make your own using dish soap, and sometimes you can add glycerin or corn syrup to make it strong, make stronger bubbles, and water. Or you can make your life easier and go to the store and buy some. I have some bubble solution back here with my giant bubble wand. Dip in it. It's easier to dip it into a jar or a big tub or something like that. Get your sticks together, open them up, and then let the bubbles go. Make sure you have fun playing outside with giant bubbles. Thanks for joining us as we kick off Pioneer Library System's Summer Learning Challenge. You can count our time together as a learning activity for the Summer Learning Challenge. Sign up and start logging your activity.